Shalom and welcome back to the tea table, my friends. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me today to see what the Lord has for us. The other day I was reading in the book of Jonah and I was amazed at the similarities between me and Jonah. We read in Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 and 2, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. You know, I can relate to Jonah, so he did probably what I would have done. Jonah got up and left just as the Lord commanded. The only problem was Jonah headed to Tarshish, which is a Phoenician city south of Spain instead of Nineveh the famous capital of ancient Assyria. And it was a big city. It had about 600,000 to a million people. It was built by Nimrod and located on the east bank of the river Tigris in Iraq, near what is now the city of Mosul. Oh, one other thing. Nineveh was also known as the capital of pain. Any new method of torture that man could think of would have probably been thought of in the city of Nineveh. No wonder Jonah was a man running for his life. You know, not every command that the Lord gives you is going to be a piece of cake and easy to follow. If you look at the map, we see that Jonah, the reluctant missionary, getting a word from the Lord, starts his journey by heading 180 degrees in the opposite direction. He's told to go to Iraq, and he heads for Spain. In verse 3 of chapter 1, we read something almost comical, and it's repeated twice, just so we can get an insight into what's going on in the head of Jonah. It tells us, at the start of the verse and the end of the verse, that Jonah did what he did to flee from the presence of the Lord as if the presence of the Lord is not in Tarshish or the bottom of the boat where Jonah was hiding. You know, we're told in Jeremiah 23, verse 24, Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. You know, when we were kids, we all had a secret hideout, a secret hiding place. This was a place that only you and a very select few friends knew about. This hideout was a place that you could go to escape the worries of your young world. It was a place where you thought you could do things that you were not supposed to do. We could hide from our parents, our enemies, our friends, or we could even hide from God if we really did something wrong. You see, the concept of God is omnipresent, in other words, God is everywhere all the time, never entered our minds. What we thought would be a comfort being able to hide from God, we now know is foolish because there is no hideout from God. Today we understand that even death, distance, or darkness cannot hide us from God. This is why in Psalms 139, verses 7 through 12, David tells us, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. So here we have Jonah thinking he, he can escape the call from God on his life by running to Tarshish or hiding in the bottom of the boat. But as often happens to any of us running from God, we find ourselves crashing into God. In other words, God can get your attention. I personally believe that's why we sing the song, He Touched Me. If Psalm 97 verse 5 tells us, 
that mountains melt like wax in the Lord's presence, in the presence of the Lord of all the earth, then I believe a gentle nudge from the Lord is enough to shake up your life forever. You know, sometimes that gentle nudge comes in the form of a great wind or great sea. In other words, a storm the likes of which you have never experienced. So much so, that we are told in Jonah chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. Who sent the wind? The Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. How many times, my friends, have I been asleep, or you have been asleep, to what God has been doing in our lives because of a bad decision that we made concerning calling of God on our life? Not only a bad decision, but the consequences of our actions was bringing grief to many others around us and many who actually were trying to help us. How many times have we come to that place that the only decision was to be thrown overboard in order to calm the winds and the waves in our life? Obviously, now I'm not speaking about you and I being thrown into the ocean or a lake, but we need to abandon our way of thinking that is really part of the problem and not the solution, especially if we see that everyone around us is desperately trying to get out of the way of our bad decision because of the winds and waves in their lives due to our decisions. Now we all know the story, the men threw Jonah into the sea and the wind and the waves stopped and a giant fish directed by the Lord came and swallowed Jonah and uh, he was in the belly of the great fish and it's there that Jonah had quiet time alone with his thoughts and the Lord. Just a note, it would seem that the great fish had an easier time doing what the Lord told him than Jonah. You know? It's hard to run away from the Lord when you are in the belly of a great fish. And the fish is swimming to where the Lord wants you to be. God will get you to where He wants you. If you are obedient, it could be a great journey. If you are disobedient, it can be a real scary trip. But you will end up where God wants you. Have you ever heard the expression, we never have time to do it right the first time? But we always seem to have time to do it right the second time. We see in Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 where we are told, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Same exact word from the Lord, just a different frame of mind from the reluctant missionary. I'm sure if Jonah had second thoughts of running away again from the Lord, the thoughts of being inside the belly of a great fish for three days was enough to change his mind and be obedient to what God was telling him. My friends, if the Lord is speaking to you and asking you to do something for Him or His kingdom, I highly recommend that you pay attention and do it the first time because the consequences of disobedience can really be a bummer on your life and the lives of your friends trying to help you. And with that, I leave you with this. Shalom. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause the light of His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn all of His attention upon you and give to you His peace. God bless my friends, and I'll see you again next week at the tea table.